These are always hard to sell them. Comfort Women Justice Coalition. Hello, everybody. My name is Phyllis Kim. I am from the Comfort Women Justice Coalition. And welcome, everybody, today. What an amazing day it is. Thank you so much for coming. 여러분, 환영합니다. 와주셔서 감사합니다. You know, the famous African-American writer, James Baldwin, said, history is not past. We carry it with us, and history is literally present in everything we do. And we know that unless we acknowledge our history and our true history, we cannot move forward. We cannot evolve, and we cannot change. This statue honoring our beloved grandmas is just one step in the process. It's one step to changing our memory and our truth. It's one step in the process of eradicating sexual violence towards women in war forever. When Hatsun Kim courageously broke her silence in 1991, she started an avalanche. Together, with her sisters from Asia, Yugoslavia, and internationally, they led the world to declare that sexual violence during warfare was a crime against humanity. This was something that was a sea change, actually, in people's thought, because up until then, actually, sexual violence during war was considered normal. Now we're here to say, never again, no more.
So here is the plaque language that we labored over uh, many, many hours and uh, we um, tried to convey the universality of the violence against women during wartime must stop. Quote, our worst fear is that our painful history during World War II will be forgotten. Former comfort women. This monument bears witness to the suffering of hundreds of thousands of women and girls, euphemistically called comfort women, who were sexually enslaved by the Japanese Imperial Armed Forces in 13 Asia Pacific countries from 1931 to 1945. Most of these women died during their wartime captivity. This dark history was hidden for decades until the 1990s when the survivors courageously broke the silence. They helped move the world to declare that sexual violence as a strategy of war is a crime against humanity for which governments must be held accountable. This language has been translated into four different languages, including Korean, Chinese, and the Japanese and Tagalog, and it will be uh, installed on the uh, side where everybody can read. You know, this monument was the result of a large coalition of organizations, Chinese, Filipino, uh, Korean, Japanese Americans, Japanese from Japan, women's organizations, vets organizations, and many, many others who often, you know, labored off in the, you know, out of the spotlight. And we'd like all the members of the Comfort Women Justice Coalition to stand up and be acknowledged and face the audience. It took us two years to get here from uh, the city council hearing that passed unanimously the resolution to build Comfort Woman Memorial in public site in San Francisco. During that two years, we lost many grandmas. Now we're going to read their names. Grandma Che Kap Sun. Grandma Zhang Sen Tu. Grandma Huang Zin Mei. Grandma Kim Kyung Sung. Grandma Che Ok Yi. Grandma Cheng Chen Tao. Grandma Gong Chong Yop. Grandma Li Su Dan. Grandma Kim, whose name is anonymous. Grandma Yu He Man. Grandma Park Suk Yi. Grandma Park Cha Su. Grandma Chen Ren Hua. Grandma Yi Sun Siok. Grandma Chen Ya Bien. Grandma Kim Kun Cha. Grandma Huang Yu Liang. Grandma Ha Sung Suk. And Grandma Lee, who wanted to remain anonymous. And we're thinking of all the women and girls who were sexually enslaved during World War II, and all those women who were sexually enslaved and sexually violated during all the wars in history. And that's why we're here today. We remember all of you. Memorial 
took us two years, and nobody could believe that we were going to do it. And every step of the way, we were confronted with Japanese denialists and the Japanese government, who for some reason felt it was absolutely essential never to remember these women, that it was absolutely essential to deny history, to pretend that none of this had ever happened. And we know right now, living in a world which is so fraught with contention, where immigrants are being challenged, where right-wingers are gaining ascendancy, that to deny history is extremely dangerous. And we feel that one of the most important things that we can do now is to have justice. Justice for the grandmas, justice for women. And because of that, there are certain demands that we are making, the grandmas are making, and the international movement for the comfort women are making, and we'd like to read them right now. One, make a sincere, official, and legally binding apology. Pay full reparations to the victims and their families. Conduct a thorough investigation of the crime and punish those found guilty in the court of law. No impunity. Memorize the victims and continue to teach its citizens an accurate and truthful history of Japan during its era of imperial expansion and World War II. And we would add, especially pay attention to the recent scholarship that has just emerged that now we think, for instance, that more than 200,000 women from China were also sexually enslaved. So we have to always pay attention to what's going on. As I said, it took us two years to come here. On September 22, 2015, the Board of Supervisors of San Francisco passed a resolution calling for a memorial to the comfort women in a public place that would talk about sexual violence during war and that would, sorry, <laughs> getting messages from afar here. Um, and that would also highlight the issue of sex trafficking internationally. We couldn't have done that without our two beautiful, wonderful, fantastic co-chairs led every step of the way, who badgered everybody, who were up in the middle of the night worrying from one thing to another. And so I'd really proudly like to announce Judge Julie Tang and Judge Lillian Smith. Big round of applause, please. Remain seated. <laughs> First of all, a big, <clears throat> a big shout out to San Francisco. Thank you, San Francisco, for hosting this memorial that speaks to a dark history of Asia in World War II that the world needs to know about. Thank you, each and every one of you who answered Lillian and my pleas for a donation of your hard-earned money time and resources to help build the Comfort Woman Memorial. In this movement, it is amazing to work with people that we thought we knew because we see them in movies, we see them in videos, or we visit the restaurants, or we say hi to them as neighbors. But going down the road to find justice for our grandmas brought us together, and we get to know them as persons, visionaries, and as friends. We hold together in unity and solidarity as Americans of Chinese, Korean, Filipino, Dutch, Japanese, Jewish, and European descent. We join up with the women's movement, the communities of scholars, veterans, lawyers, teachers, dentists, medical professionals, and the Chinatown community agencies to build this memorial. And in as much as the memorial is a symbol of memory, resilience, and justice, it symbolizes the community spirit that helped build this memorial. And the community is joining all of you today. And thank you so much for coming here 
with the good spirits that you are feeling right now and the good intentions to help us to celebrate the success of this memorial. Thank you so much. A full-size memorial will be unveiled before your very eyes today. The San Francisco Vista will be forever changed. And the Comfort Women Memorial and San Francisco will be permanently forged together in search of justice. Thank you so much for all your community support. I've been asked today many times, how do you feel today? You know, I'm extremely emotional. I can hardly believe the day is finally here. My life has been on hold for two years. I retired as a judge from the San Francisco Superior Court to work on this project. But you know, what is two years out of my life compared to a lifetime of misery and nightmare that the comfort women endured? I can go back to work as a signed judge and get my life back. The comfort women can never get their lives back. One former comfort woman said, it is not a comfort station, but a execution ground. Not a comfort station, but an execution ground. Comfort for Japanese soldiers. Hell for us. Today, we have a lot to thank for. We would not be here today if we have not had the owners of this property's permission to be here. I'd like to formally recognize the owners of this property, Jem Dale and John Herr of Lincoln Property Company. John Herr and his wife. No, that's, uh, oh. Thank you so much. Without them, we could not be here. So really, thank you so much. I would also like to thank the San Francisco Rec and Park Commissioners, especially Commissioner Alan Lowe. Where's Alan Lowe? Yay. You know what, Alan, without you, we would not be here. Thank you so much for your brilliant idea to use this private land that will become public land very shortly. Thank you, Alan Lowe. And we have appeared before the Visual Arts Commission and the San Francisco Art Commission about 10 times. They were so patient with us. Is Susan Pontius here? But I'd like to thank them very much. You know, I thought two years is a long time, but um, uh, what did you say to me? We, I, oh, we, we, you know, two years is a long time for us, but as San Francisco goes, two years is really on a fast track. Um, Jeffrey Heller, where are you, Jeffrey Heller? Jeffrey Heller, without you, we could not have been here. He is the soul of our project. I'm surprised he's still taking our calls. Jeffrey Heller, thank you very much. He believed in us from day one. Thank you. And of course, Hathaway, the Windy Construction, help us put this Comfort Women Memorial down. You know, I like to say that the significance of this memorial is a lot. But Japan wants to tear down memorials. We want to build memo more memorials. Japan has Yasukuni Shrine, which includes Class A war criminals. We have San Francisco Comfort Women Memorial. Abi makes annual visits to Yasukuni Shrine to honor Class A war criminals. We have our Comfort Women uh, victim that we will honor. I don't know how many of you know, but um, there is a Class A criminal, Nobushisuke Kishi, who is actually the maternal grandfather of our Japan's prime minister. And he is responsible for a lot of atrocities in China and elsewhere. Now, Kishi's grandson, our current prime minister Abe, said that Kishi's blood runs in my veins. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that we want to honor history, we want to honor truth, and we're very glad that you're here to honor the comfort women with us today. Today is not the end of the story, but the beginning of the story. We're going to build more memorials. We're going to tell the world about the truth. We hope memorials will spring up all over the place. Thank you very much.
Music has been always the integral part of every public effort to commemorate um, the victims or to commemorate important historical event. Um, in Korea, we have a tradition of drumming. Um, and the drumming unite people. The drumming unite the villagers to come out and support each other. Iumse uh, is the name of the uh, this drumming group um, who commemorate and who uh, practice this uh, music of unity and uh, to remember their tradition. And they are here to congratulate our um, unveiling of the memorial. Uh, they will be making their ways from behind, so please uh, be mindful and uh, uh, make some ways for them.
representing people's movements, people's organizations, and also uh, government officials from both the Bay Area and around the world. I'd like to recognize Sandy Fewer, my supervisor from District 1, who, who helped to pass a resolution for today, making today September 22nd, 2015, Comfort Woman Day in the city of San Francisco. I'd also like to recognize Norman E., who's also on the Board of Supervisors, who helped to pass our original resolution calling for the establishment of this memorial. As we know, this is not just a memorial for San Francisco or for the U.S. This is a memorial for the world. And we are extremely honored to have with us today our, the ambassador from the Republic of China, Lu Lin Kuan. I'm the Consul General of the People's Republic of China in San Francisco. Now I'm going to read in Chinese. You have to learn Chinese.尊敬的顾立莲法官设立的慰安妇纪念碑最先提案设立慰安妇纪念碑的马兆光前世议员世界抗日战争批准纪念碑的方案和碑文众所周知
及其亲属的身心造成严重伤害。这段历史，体证庐山，不容抵赖。旧金山今天的这座慰安妇纪念碑，就如同在美国和世界各地广泛存在的。犹太人大屠杀纪念馆纪念碑一样，目的就是要提醒人们，勿忘历史，就是要让世界人民充分认识侵略战争的残酷性。最后，我希望我们面前的这座纪念碑能够让世人，特别是年轻人，了解。这一历史悲剧，让我们携起手来，铭记历史，珍惜和平，共同捍卫人类尊严。谢谢大家。During the past two years, we've been asked, or we've been rather forced. To do the impossible, and that's what I'm going to try to do right now for you to translate for the ambassador of the People's Republic of China. Okay, here we go. So he said, um, he wanted to recognize that. The Judge Lilian Singh and the uh, Judge Julie Tang's uh, tenacious um, uh, perseverance um, in the past two years, leading this effort to build memorial in San Francisco. Um, we, the government of China and the Chinese people support the Comfort Women Memorial, and this is. Because this is not just um, an issue between China and Japan, or the, between the issue between Korea and Japan, but it's uh, the issue for everyone. And I just want to make one comment. This is my comment that every time when we make progress, especially in human rights um, issues, it is always the people who push the boundary, who push the edge. And then the government follows. I think that is a very positive move. That now the government of the uh, Republic, um, the People's Republic of China, is uh, recognizing the efforts made by the scholars, the amazing scholars Su Ji Liang and uh, Pei Pei Chu and um, uh, Professor Chen, as well as the amazing leadership. Of the Chinese Americans、uh, in San Francisco, so thank you so much for coming, and thank you so much for your warm congratulations. Just to、uh, make another correction, first I said the Republic of China, when it's of course the People's Republic of China, and it's the Consul General, not the Ambassador. Oh, he's and he's also an ambassador. By the by the way. Republic of China also、um, are working with us. The people in the、uh, Republic of China, which is Taiwan, also、um, work in solidarity and unity with everyone from all over the world. So we also have, as I said, a lot of city officials with us today and Bay Area officials, and we'd like to recognize our very own Jeff Adachi, who is the most incredible public defender, and who actually led an effort around giving immigrants deportation advice against、uh, ICE, and we're so happy and proud to have him with us today, Jeff Adachi. I just want to correct something, Julie Tang and I. It is the people of Taiwan who is part of China, and China together we support this movement. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to say how honored I am to be here to be a part of this.、Um, this was a couple of years ago when 
uh, both Judge Singh and Judge Tang uh, asked me to uh, be the, the co-chair of the uh, moral committee, and I said, well, you do realize I'm Japanese-American? And she said, yes, we do realize that. And uh, still they wanted uh, me to be a part of this, and I was really honored, and I thought it was so important. You know, when I first came to San Francisco in 1978, it was really the Korean community uh, that embraced myself and, and other activists. We were involved in a case of a young man named Cho Su Lee, who was wrongfully convicted of a crime here in Chinatown, and the community really got behind him. And it was through that experience that I really learned about uh, the Korean community and really how much they have done and given uh, to our country. And this memorial, I think, is such an important day for history and for justice, because this is going to memorialize the suffering uh, that so many endured uh, during World War II at the hands of the imperialist Japanese. I see my former boss here, Jeff Brown, and uh, Congressman Honda, as well as many other elected officials, and uh, just very honored to be a part of this event, and thank all of you for making this happen. No one can express properly uh, what an important role this man played in bringing recognition and awareness in the United States about the um, many, many human rights violations and atrocities, including the Comfort Woman, and especially the Comfort Woman issue. Um, he was a California assemblyman in 1999 when he introduced a uh, assembly joint um, resolution to urge the Japanese government to face squarely its uh, wartime atrocity during World War II. And when he went on to become a congressman, uh, in 2007, he worked with a grassroots organization around the country to pass a House Resolution 121. My conduct. And not everyone knows that he is an unofficial boyfriend of Grandma Yong Su Lee. Thank you, Phyllis. Now the word's out. In 1992, in the courts of Japan, three women who were victims of sexual slavery under the Japanese military uh, armed forces testified and won in the courts in Japan. And from that cour courageous moment, the three voices became trumpets across this, across this nation and across the world. Today, San Francisco is the major city of this, uh, of this country that is erected a memorial to the comfort women, to the uh, victims of sexual slavery. And I just want to say to the leadership uh, of this city, thank you very much. Um, and it's not about being Asian or not being of another country or anything else. Like It's about being a human being. This is a human rights issue. And I think that the message that we are sending from the Golden State to the Golden Gate from the city of San Francisco is never again will we ever victimize girls and women during times of natural disasters, through times of conflict and war. This has to stop. And so, to Grandma, my girlfriend, said, come to me that. To the, let me give a shout out to one group also. The Global Alliance for Telling Truth in the Sino-Japanese War they're the ones that put up the exhibit in Stanford University where I first saw it. And it ignited the fire in me to make sure that this does not happen again. That every person, regardless of your station, that you speak up and speak out for the girls and women of our family, of our community, of our nation. Thank you. government officials <laughs> that are want to give their solidarity and their pledge their honor and their determination to make this a thing of the past. 
First, we have Phil Ting from the California Assembly. Thank you very much. I just wanted to join everyone in thanking the hard work of Judges Singh and Tang, uh, Supervisor Ma, I know Congressman Honda. This has really been a huge coalition effort. Uh, I can remember many stories of my family. They were in China during World War II and hearing about all of the hardships that they really went through. And to think about this memorial and the atrocities that it recognizes and acknowledges that these horrible acts happened, that these women were forced into slavery, and that is something that we must always remember in our heart, and something that we as a city must acknowledge, and it's something that we have to stand up against and fight against. And I just wanted to thank the entire coalition that's been working on this for decades, uh, from the rape of Nan King to this, and just thank them for their effort to educate all of us and to make sure that we don't ever repeat this again. Thank you. And our, unfortunately, our mayor is out of town in Ireland. <laughs> so we have Hydra Mendoza as his representative. Hydra Mendoza is, oh, she's not here. But we have greetings from our Mayor Lee. And now also we have um, Governor Brown is in New York. And we have Jeffrey Brown who will give a message from the Brown family. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be here. When Julie asked, uh, Lily and Julie asked me to uh, uh, contact Jerry, uh, he enthusiastically wanted to be here, but he said that uh, he'd have to check with his schedule. He found out that he had to go to the United Nations to represent California uh, on human rights uh, and climate issues. Now, it's, it's nice to have him at least, in, that's an, a, a good excuse to be there because they, there's an American public official that's not crazy presenting himself before the United Nations. But uh, I have, uh, <laughs> I don't do this very often representing Jerry. Uh, I do uh, sometimes pass for him because we have the same hairline. But, uh, let me uh, quote to you exactly the message that he has. Uh, the dedication of this first memorial to the comfort women in a major city in, San Francisco, in the United States not only represents the increasing public recognition of this dark chapter in world history, but the breaking of a long-held silence. I applaud uh, Yong Sung Lee and the courageous women who have come forward and made the world aware of the suffering they have endured. Sincerely, Jerry Brown. And it's really amazing that all of you have worked so hard to make this a reality in our city and to make this message clear to the world. Uh, I have to say from a personal note that my mother-in-law in Singapore during the occupation endured uh, the uh, was present at the ban banetic of uh, Chinese women in that uh, in that city at that time. So this atrocity, these atrocities, can't go forgotten. They cannot go unnoticed. And we must con learn the, the lesson of history so that this type of brutality never occurs anywhere in this world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, we'd like to welcome uh, Assembly Member David Chu. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I want to also echo the thanks of our elected family for all of you for being part of an amazing family. Take a look around you. Just look at your neighbors. You, we, are not just a family of activists, we're not just a family of San Franciscans, but we are a family that represents the hopes 
of our common humanity. I want to also take a moment and thank all the activists who have been part of this. In particular, I know we often refer to our Asian tiger moms. I want to thank our Asian tiger judges. Thank you, Judges Elaine Singh and Julie Tang. You know, this year, in 2017, we are remembering the 135th anniversary of the Chinese Exclusion Act. And we're remembering the 75th anniversary of the Japanese-American internment. And we are remembering the plight of our Muslim American brothers and sisters since 9-11. We're all in this together. And while we celebrate today this memorial, we have to remember how much work still needs to be done. In 1979, the United Nations passed the CEDAW, Convention Against Discrimination Against Women. It was a treaty that's been ratified by over a hundred countries standing up to ensure that women are never treated in the way that they were many years ago. But the United States remains part of a handful of countries along with Somalia and Sudan and Iran that have yet to sign this treaty. Over the past 10 years in the California State Legislature, there has been a struggle to test the rape kit, the rape evidence kit of every rape kit collected in the state of California. It is estimated that there are thousands of untested rape kits in our state. Today, after six legislative attempts, we have still not achieved justice. Our work is not done. And let me just say to you, to us, today we remember, we recall, we will always be resilient, and we will resist. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to, you know, this, this memorial wasn't just something from San Francisco. People were involved from all over the Bay Area. And a lot of people were involved from the South Bay, and I'd like to introduce Assemblyman Campson Chu. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really honored to be here. I drove all the way from the city of San Jose to join my colleague David Chu and a field team and Council General Luo, uh, and, and also our uh, Congressman uh, Mike Honda to uh, really celebrate the unveiling of this uh, uh, Comfort Woman branch. This is really, really uh, righting the wrong, and this is really a human rights issue, and during the peacetime as well as during the wartime. So I'm happy really to see so many people are here uh, with all of us, and we should continue fighting for the justice, we should continue fighting for the truth, and we should continue fighting for the human rights. Thank you very much for having me. And one more. We're so proud and happy to have our very own Mark Leno here from the Senate, State Senate. Mark, are you here? Thank you for the introduction and the opportunity to just say that I am very humbled to be here before Mike Honda's girlfriend, Grandma Lee. The horror and the terror, the brutality, the cruelty of what these hundreds of thousands of, we refer to them as women, but they were really young girls and young women, as young as ages 8 and 10 who didn't survive 87% of the women we are recognizing today died. Very few survived because of the physical horror they endured. And so to remember that we should never forget and never again, and that it is through the teaching of great leaders like Judge Lillian Singh 
and Judge Julie Tang for bringing this forward so that in fact we never forget and in fact never again, though we know we have much work yet to be done because the phenomenon of s sexual slavery and sex trafficking is ongoing as we speak. So for all of those who have brought us here today, and for all of us who must carry this word forward, I say thank you. When we started this statue, we didn't completely know what was really involved in having a statue in San Francisco. And we actually had to go to about between 16 and 20 public hearings in order to get this statue built. And one of the main things we had to go through is the fantastic San Francisco Arts Commission that has done such a wonderful job that now every new building has to have public art and the public art has to be original. So we decided to have an international competition with more than 30 people applied and we looked at all the different ones. We had a very good internationally recognized panel of judges. And the person who won was Stephen White, who produced this amazing, amazing statue. When you see it, and when you see the girls, you're going to say, I know her. I know them. They look like people I know, because they really are people we know. And so it is my great pleasure to introduce Stephen White. This is by far the hardest part of making any memorial is trying to get through this next bit. All right. Firstly, I'd like to thank uh, the city of San Francisco for building us this beautiful backdrop to the monument. Anytime I'm designing a public piece, one of the most important considerations is how it's going to relate to its surroundings. It's difficult to imagine how a project will come together until it's finally complete. So to be able to stand here today and see these figures, the figures of these girls that stand as a permanent celebration of courage, resilience, and justice, and to see how these bronze figures reference the colors of the building. Sorry, is that better? Let's start again. No. 